If you keep setting goals, but then year after year, you find yourself falling short, never really hitting them. You find yourself in this constant pattern of being super excited, super motivated for your new goals, your new intentions, and then nothing. Nothing really happens. It just kind of falls off. If that's you, then today's the day we turn that around because this year will be different because I'm gonna walk you through exactly what to do, how to plan and how to see things differently so you can start actually creating the life you want. Hey friends, welcome back. If you're new here, my name's Jill, and I help women step into their power, tap into their divine feminine and become their best self. So if that's something you wanna do, you should subscribe and stick around. So we're gonna talk about how to actually achieve your goals this year. But first I wanna be clear. If you're new to the channel, if you've never seen me before, I'm all about ease, soft life vibes. I'm not a hustle culture type of person. That's not me and that's not what I personally strive for in my life. So I'm not coming at this topic from the perspective of push more, do more, be better. I want to talk about how to achieve your goals, but from a place of more ease and flow. It doesn't matter if you hit your goals, if your health, if your relationships, if your mental sanity falls apart in the process. So with that said, let's get into it. So first, it sounds so simple and basic, but you need to actually write your goals down. I know this is a basic tip, but the amount of people who don't physically write down their goals is astounding. And it's been shown time after time, it's been proven that those who write down their goals are way more likely to achieve them. I have mine all super clearly written down in my Notion. My 2024 vision page is like my favorite page because it just breaks it all down. And I do have a video walking you through my Notion just in case you want to see it. But you need to write those goals down somewhere anywhere, somewhere where you can clearly see and reference those goals, not just like in a notebook that you're gonna close, put in a drawer and never open again. It has been studied and shown time after time that those who not only have clear goals, but also write them down are immensely more successful than their peers, make way more money than their peers and are just way more likely to hit those milestones. Writing them down helps you clarify exactly what you want. And it encourages you to really think about how you're gonna bring those things into existence. And then once you have them, you use this goal document as a reference to guide your life, something you reference constantly. If you're not willing to take 30 minutes to sit down with yourself, to get super clear on your goals, write them down, you know, something like I did in my notion. If you can't even do that, do you really think that you're gonna put in the energy and effort to make those goals a reality? Probably not. This is the first step. You need to get clear with yourself. Declare to yourself on paper what your goals are. Solidify and put them into existence by writing them out. Okay, so after you write them down, this is the most important part, honestly. This is why this is such a big chunk in the video. You need to reflect on how you're gonna achieve that goal, make it a reality, make a plan, right? So what you're gonna do is you're going to break each goal down into mini goals. I would suggest either breaking them down into monthly mini goals or quarterly mini goals, whatever you prefer. I prefer monthly, but you can do whatever you want. And then once you have those mini goals with a clear new deadline, AKA the end of the month or the end of the quarter, whatever you want, you're going to set up a clear action plan for it, a clear system. This is how you start showing up for yourself and actually start achieving your goals. Let's say you wanna save $12,000 by the end of the year. Okay, that's great. You're clear on your goal. You wrote it down. Now, how do you do that though? Break it down, probably month by month. What will you need to save in January, February, March, so on? And what kind of actions will you need to take or not take to make that a reality? If you wanna save $12,000 by the end of the year, then that means you need to save $1,000 each month. That means in January, you don't have to think about the end goal of $12,000. All you have to think about is saving that $1,000. How are you gonna save that $1,000? What's the plan? Are you going to adjust your budget? Are you going to limit spending somewhere? Are you going to add another revenue stream to your business? Like what, what are you gonna do? What's the plan? But that $1,000 feels so much more reasonable, so much more achievable than that big goal of $12,000. The problem with our big yearly goals and why so many people never achieve them is because they're so far away. If you wanna achieve something by the end of the year, it feels so far. It feels like we have so much time and it's hard to take action on something or have motivation for something that feels so far in the distance. Where not only that deadline is far away, but the end result, the outcome feels far away. This is why breaking things down and creating mini goals and mini deadlines is important. It's immediate, something you can take action on and achieve right away. And those mini goals feel a lot easier to tackle. 
And again, I'm all about making things as easy as possible. The point of all this is not to make goal setting this big intense thing. It's not to make your life feel hard and boring and overwhelming. It's meant to do the opposite. It's meant to add ease. No matter what, if you want to live a soft life or not, your goals are still your goals and to achieve them, you still have to take action on them. There's no way around that. But creating this clarity for yourself, a plan for yourself, a clear direction, that takes away like 50% of the challenge and overwhelm right there. Breaking things down into achievable chunks and planning things out, creating an easy to follow action plan, that creates ease and simplicity and clarity and direction in your life. Or let's say for example, that you want to get healthy and fit. That's a really popular goal for the new year and that's a wonderful goal, but how are you gonna do that? What does that actually mean to you? What will that look like on a weekly, monthly basis? The end all goal of be healthy and fit is great, but how can you break that down into little buckets? Little buckets that you can achieve. That might look like go to Pilates three times a week. On the non-Pilates days, you're gonna go for a long walk and you are going to cook at home Monday through Friday. These are clear, actionable steps that you can take. All you have to think about are those three things. And if you complete those three things in January, then you completed your goal. And maybe your monthly goals might change, right? Like maybe you'll start out going to Pilates three times a week, but then by March, you'll go four times a week. And then maybe by September, you'll go five times a week. Or maybe you're traveling a lot next month. Okay, then you're probably not gonna be cooking at home Monday through Friday. So then what's that new goal for yourself? What's the action plan? How are you gonna show up? Every monthly goal does not have to be the same, but the point is that you break it down into something micro, something achievable. If you want to learn a new language this year, that's a big lofty goal, that's amazing, but how are you gonna do that? Write it down. If you want to be conversational in French, for example, by the end of the year, okay, what does that look like? What's the schedule? How often are you gonna practice? How are you gonna do that? And then you no longer have to think about the end goal of being able to speak French because that feels daunting, that feels like a lot, that feels overwhelming, and it feels so far away. All you have to think about is that current micro goal. Maybe that's showing up to your French class once a week, however you decide to do it. So many people do not achieve their goals simply because they do not break them down into bite-sized achievable chunks. Stop thinking about the end goal so much. Break that main goal down into micro goals and only focus on that micro goal. Focus on how you have to show up to make progress on that goal, not the end result, the action. Not how much money you need to make or how much weight you wanna lose or how many Instagram followers you want to gain by the end of the year. That's an outcome and we can't always control the outcomes. Stop thinking so much about the outcomes. What are the inputs? What are the things you have to take action on to get there and completely focus on those inputs. That's what we are in control of. If you keep doing this every month, every quarter, however you like to do it, I promise you that you will go far. Now, if you're a visual person like me, then you might really like this. I made this 2024 at a glance calendar. So basically you can see the entire year at once. Each column is a month and you can see how short the year really is. And this is an amazing way to plan out your years, your quarters, your months at a high level. I put this on my Google Drive so you guys can have it if you want. The link for that is below in the description box. It's just like a Google Drive link. Um, you just have to copy and paste it to your own Google Sheet. You don't have to like sign up for anything or give me your email to get it. You can just get that link and it'll take you right there. You can send it to your friends if they want it. So feel free to grab this if you want, but this is how it works. The columns are each month. The white little boxes are weekdays. The pink boxes are weekends. And then I also have holidays on here, American federal holidays in yellow and then the other holidays holidays on here. So it's just good to be able to see the whole year at a glance. And then what I do is I put my vacation days in pink. So basically if I'm going on vacation this week, I'll put it all right here and then I can visually see how much time it's taking up for me and like where I'm, I'm putting my days to. And then I also have this neon green for like a rest day. If I'm gonna take that day off, not work, but I'm not going on vacation, then that's kind of helpful to know as well. And then on top of each month, there's a little box for your monthly goals, your micro goals, and you can break down how you want to show up that month. And then it's cool because you can see the entire year at a glance every single day. And then you can high level plan out each day and those goals. Let's say your goal is to make $100,000 in your business this year, but your micro goal, your monthly goal for January is to launch a new digital product. We'll call it product ABC. And the days that you want to work on this product, you can put product ABC. And I usually add a color in the background because I like that. And then you can kind of just copy and paste this to all the days that you want to work on it 
and you can start seeing things at a monthly view, how much time it's taking. I don't know, I just think that this is really helpful. I think it's an interesting way to look at the year. So I'll put the link for that down below in case you wanna grab it. Now, the next tip to actually achieve your goals this year is to get super clear and honest with yourself about your priorities. With each goal, decide its priority level and rank them. Not every goal can be a high priority. You have to prioritize so you know where to put your time and energy to first. Again, I have this on my goal setting page in Notion. I have a column for my priority ranking and I shared this in my Notion video, but when I was honest with myself, my highest priorities were not to grow my business or even to see my friends and family more. It was to one, go on a fun Europe vacation with my husband and two, get stronger. Those are my two highest priorities. And this is important to know and to honor. Like just last week, I had a lot of work to do. I had a lot of stuff on my plate and I was like, oh, I have a lot to do. I wanna go to a Pilates class today, but I don't think I'll have time. And then I was like, wait, I rated getting stronger, going to Pilates as a higher priority than my business items. Growing my business to me was a medium priority. Okay, so that means that the Pilates class gets booked first that comes first, and then I work my work schedule around that. Don't let your to-dos get in the way of your goals. When the priorities are clear, it's easy to know where to put your time. And be ruthless and honest about your rankings. There can really only be like one or two high priority goals on your list. The ironic thing is, is that when you try to do everything, you usually end up doing nothing. Know what's important. And I want you to ask yourself a question with every goal that you wrote down. Why? Why do you care? Why is it a goal? Why is it important to you? Why should you put in the effort? Why? Jim Rohn said that if the why is powerful, the how is easy. And getting clear on your why helps you figure out if your goals are actually your goals or not. Are you studying to get into grad school because it's pulling you closer to your life purpose, how you wanna impact the world, or because your dad told you you should do it? If you wanna get fit so you'll have a six pack at the beach this summer, or if you wanna to learn to play guitar because you think it'll make you look cool, those aren't very strong whys. And when your why is weak, the action is difficult. When your why is strong, it gives you resilience, focus, clarity, direction, and it serves as a compass. So many people don't just take a second to think about the underlying whys behind their reason for doing something. And that's why if there's two groups of people trying to get healthy, healthy and fit, the first one, if they're doing it from a place of, I wanna take care of myself. I wanna feel good in my body. I wanna have mental clarity. I wanna live a long time. I wanna see my grandchildren grow up. These people tend to succeed at being fit and healthy way more than the group of people who tries to get healthy just to lose some weight or go into a smaller dress size because that why is weak. Get clear on your why for each goal. Why does it matter? Why do you care? And if you can't think of a good why, then it probably shouldn't be on your goal list. Lastly, I want you to know that it's okay to quit your goals sometimes. What I mean is like, if your goal this year is to grow an Instagram, become an Instagram influencer and grow to 100,000 followers so that you can quit your job, if four months in you realize, oh, wait, I actually hate this, this sucks. Use it as a learning lesson and move on. If your goal is no longer aligned, let it go and move on. You don't have to keep doing it just so one day you can check off an imaginary checkbox. Throughout the year, we grow, we learn, we change, and our goals might change with us. I remember probably like three years ago, one of my big goals was to start waking up early, bright and early, like 6 a.m. every single day, even weekends. And so I forced myself to get up early and I did this for quite a while. And I just kept forcing myself because so many people say that, oh, it's amazing, you learn to love it. It's starts to feel so good, like you will love it. And I was waiting to love it. And I never did. I realized that first of all, my why was not very strong. I had a goal of waking up early because that's what people said was good and productive because I felt like I was supposed to. And second of all, I'm a nighttime girly, I always have been. And there's something so sacred and beautiful and special about those moments to me, those moments at night. And that's honestly when I feel most connected to myself. And some people might feel that in the morning, but I've always felt that at night. So anyways, a few months in, I was like, well, screw this. and I. Stopped and I was happier for it. I quit my goal, but that doesn't mean that I necessarily failed. I just gained a lot more clarity about myself and the type of life I like to live. If you're honest with yourself and you realize that a goal of yours is just 
no longer aligned, or maybe you realize it wasn't right for you since the very beginning. It's okay to let it go. This isn't you failing. This is you being self-aware. Let it go and focus on the things that are important to you. So that is how I plan my goals, how I achieve my goals, and how I create real forward momentum in my life. Now, I mentioned a few times my goal setting page in Notion. It's called my 2024 vision page. I have a full video walking you through my Notion. It includes that goal page. So if you haven't seen that video, I highly recommend you check it out. If you're into organization like I am, then I think you'll really love that. So I hope to see you there. Thank you so much for watching and staying until the very end. I appreciate you. Bye.